Hey everyone, in this video, I want to talk about Microsoft Defender for Identity. There's a huge focus on identity today. It's that initial security perimeter as organizations embrace more and more cloud services. We think about the cloud identities, we think about the cloud applications. And at the root of the Microsoft identity, obviously we have Entra. So I can think about, well, I've got my Entra tenant. And then there are a number of solutions that help us protect the identities, protect the cloud applications. For example, we often think about things like Entra identity protection. We can think about, well, there are many defender solutions. So I might, for example, think about, well, there's the Defender for Cloud app, which is a very obvious one where we think about sort of signals and getting information. So we have a lot of Defender solutions, Defender for Cloud apps, Endpoint, um, Microsoft 365. Uh, the list goes on. There's a huge number of different Defender solutions. We think about Sentinel. So Sentinel, remember, well, that can go and hook into a huge number of different sources and bring that insight into our environment. So you have all of these different things which fundamentally are signals. They're gathering different signals that we then act on. So I have this idea, and this is a big effort, into, well, let's have this shared pool of signals that we can then do various things on. So we can then do detections, we can work out all these different types of behavior going on by bringing all of these different signals together. And where we think of this today is we have the Defender portal. So we think of, okay, we're gonna bring all these together into that extended detection and response solution. So all of these signals can then go into our XDR solution. And if we go and look at this just super quickly, so here I'm obviously in Microsoft Defender, well, just on the main homepage, it talks about, well, information about our identities, which obviously we're gonna focus a lot more on, um, SaaS solutions, if there's any malware being detected through hooking into things like Endpoint, our overall secure score, device compliance, if there was different types of data, I can simulate attacks. So there's just huge amounts of information, Sentinel integration. All of this comes together into now this, this central point, which is fantastic. But notice in my picture, what I've really focused on here is, well, Entra, the cloud identity. And that's fantastic. But realistically, most organizations still today, when I think of identity, the source of truth is gonna be your Active Directory domain services environment. Now there could be a HR system that feeds into this, could be through the Entra provisioning services, creates the accounts here. But this is where you have huge numbers of accounts that sure they might then synchronize up to your Entra tenant, but I have my Active Directory domain services. I may have Active Directory Federation services, Active Directory certificate services. So I have all of these different components that have a huge part to play in our identity landscape. And they're all parts that could be attacked. And if I think about, well, those, the bad actors who are trying to sort of do harm, well, those bad actors, we'll say that the bad actors are always very angry. We have our bad actor. Well, yes, obviously they can attack the cloud, but they can also attack our on-premises and realize once they compromise one of those, well, then they can go down in this direction or they can go up in that direction. So we need the full picture. I have to get signals, yes, from all the cloud sources, the Entra, the Identity Protection, the Sentinel, the Defender for Cloud Apps, the Defender for Microsoft 365. I want all of these signals to feed in to my extended detection and response, but I can't ignore this piece. And likewise, I can't ignore the fact that, well, customers may have 
another solution. They may have some other IDP. They have other components, which again is important that we get those signals in as well. It can't just limit to what we're gonna look at. And so really the ultimate goal in all of this is I'm, I'm really drawing on this picture. I want as many signals as possible. I wanna be able to gather these because the more signals I get, the more powerful my ability to detect when there's some anomalous behavior and track the story of what they want to do. So the big focus is, I, I drew out XDR here, but a huge focus on really what we want to achieve is this idea of the um, identity threat detection and response. So as kind of a child of this, we have this idea of the identity threat detection and response. And so obviously it's kind of getting the same signals from here as well. So it's identity and it's security coming together because it's a core part of it. And if you think about all of these signals coming from Defender for Cloud Apps, from Sentinel, from Identity Protection, other IDPs can then feed in through connectors for Defender for Cloud Apps, this becomes that much more powerful. And we saw that in the portal. So if we jump back over again, we saw this idea on that overview page of ITDR that whole point around the identity threat detection and response. And it's kind of talking to me about, well, things it's de deploying of sensors and health alerts. And it's talking about, well, hey, look, there's different licenses. Obviously I talked about ident intra identity protection, then also this defender for identity. And I can then drill down into more details if I actually go to the identity section over here. So it's just a core part, it's not a different portal. And I can go to this dashboard. And in this dashboard, this is all focused around that identity threat detection and response. And you can see it's telling me about, oh yeah, look, there's cloud users, there's on-prem users, there's hybrid users. And it's bringing all of those signals together to give me information about my identity, about highly privileged identities, both in the cloud uh, and on-prem. It's bringing all of that in one place. I can see security related incidents, okay. I guess I've been attacking my tenant a bit too much and we'll go into that. Users at risk, my domains. But it's bringing all of this together and that's really the key point. It is not just, okay, they created a defender portal and great, it shows bits of data from all these different silos. What's really happening is all of these different things are bringing the signals together to facilitate that greater idea. Because, hey, we wanna detect, but then we also want to have the ability to disrupt. So we need all of those different signals. We wanna think about, well, user and entity behavior analysis so we can detect when something's happening that's not based on what is regularly happening for a user? What do they normally do? This bit's still ignored. Now, obviously I mentioned Defender for Identity and that's what's gonna start filling in these gaps. So with Defender for Identity, it's gonna add in the ability to, yes, it's gonna have some sensors. So there's gonna be a sensor, which we'll talk about. And I deploy that sensor to these services where I have them, but then it's gonna feed in from those sensors signals, which can now be added into that signal pool. But additionally, Defender for Identity is not just gathering signals, it then processes and understands what those signals may be. And it doesn't only use the signals that it's getting from its sensors, it will actually also listen to the signals that may be coming, for example, those other IDPs that have connectors via cloud apps. It's gonna look at those signals and understand what's happening there as well. So that's a key part of what Defender for Identity is going to add. So if we go back and look at that solution for a second. 
we notice straight away it's telling me just within the area that well look there are some identity related incidents and it, it's showing me and how many active alerts are associated with each of them. Now I could uh, click on one of these and the key point here is, let me just scroll back up, it is not some special unique defender for identity. That incident, I'll just show it up here as well, it's just a core part of the incidents. So if I look at that discovery incident on one endpoint, it's again a story that it's created and it's putting together different types of alert. So it detected, well, hey, look, there was some account enumeration. And then I saw the Honey Token account had some activity on it. Well, that's weird. I can see the users that were involved. I can see the machine that was performing the actions. I can see, well, who was it trying to talk to? I can see detail of some of the users down here that were impacted by it. And I can see the active alerts. So it's showing me the detail about the particular incidents. And then it's showing me details about all well, the actual alerts as well, which again is just part of the regular alerting. I can see over here. So if I was to detect, and while I'm in here, let's just be clear, it does show me, well, what was the source of this detection? So these were gathered, these signals were gathered and then alerting triggered because of Defender for Identity. So Defender for Identity was the source of creating this alert. And yes, it was responsible for getting those signals as well. But here I can go and look at a certain alert and it will then give me those details. So in this case, there were, well, 153 guess attempts on accounts. I can go and get details of, well, which accounts it was actually trying to get to. I can see networking activities around all of these different types of attacks. So I've got all of the detail around it. I can see, well, it was trying to do things to non-existing accounts. And then it shows me the details of all of those. And once again, we have all of this detail on the right hand side about exactly what it was doing, the devices, the users, I can comment on this, I can get additional information, I can manage the alert, but we get these for all of them. For all of these different types of attack I was doing, hey look, a suspicious service. And it's using that intelligence. So John Savile, he's suspicious, was not previously observed creating services, but then he did. Was not previously observed logging into that before this suspicious activity. It's showing me the service I created. So I've got all of these new signals. And you can see I did a whole bunch of different nasty things um, against my domain. I was looking for principles on LDAP. I was doing some reconnaissance on user and IP addresses. And I then had a honey token stood up. So these are all just really good different signals that we have available. And as I talked about, for the talking to my domain controllers, my federation servers, my certificate servers, but we have a sensor. So if I scroll down and look at my settings, and we go and look specifically at identities, we can see I, in my case, I don't have federation services stood up anymore, certificate services a separate box. I can see, well, yeah, I've got my sensor deployed on my domain controller. It is up to date. Now I do have a, a health status, which is interesting. And we'll come back to that. But a key part now is the addition and deployment of the sensor is very, very simple. There used to be a whole bunch of different things I had to do in advance, had to have things up and running before it would work. Well, they've really simplified that. There are still configurations you have to do. And as I said, let me, let me go to my health issues. The health issues are actually up here now in my identities, so I can see them here. Well, it's telling me, hey, I don't have auditing on the ADFS container, so that's gonna limit the signals that it's going to get. So that's a bad thing. Now I can click on it, and absolutely, it's got a link to how I could manually enable that. And it will walk me through step by step on how to do that. But one of the really nice things they've done, if I go and look at tools, they now have a PowerShell module, Defender for Identity. 
if you download this PowerShell module, it now does all of those configurations and remediations for you. So for example, here is that ADFS auditing one. So I can just with a single command now run that and that will actually go and link to the steps that I would have had to have done manually. But that single command can do that for me. So if I think about large scale, there are organizations that have hundreds, maybe thousands of domain controllers. Well, in the past, getting this sensor deployed and then configured at scale was very, very painful. But it's not anymore. Now I can just use this PowerShell module for Defender for Identity, and it can then drive at massive scale the configuration. So I could just go and push it out over thousands of sensors if I needed to, and get the configuration up and running. So it's, it's really no friction when I think about wanting to actually go and enable this. If there is a new version of the sensor, it automatically will update itself now. If I think about rings of deployment, one of the things that I can do is pretty nice. If we go back and look at my sensors for a second, if I click on the three dots, we do have this option of enable delayed update. So I can think about that, well, hey, I maybe want to get the sensor updated on some test environments first, and then I'll roll it out to the rest. I can absolutely enable that just through that delayed update for certain of my sensors. So I can enable that ringed rollout. Now, what is the sensor doing? It's doing a number of different things. So yes, obviously it's, it's doing a deep packet inspection. It's sniffing things on the network. It's looking at logs. It's leveraging ETW, the event tracing for Windows. It has different types of filtering and enrichment. So it doesn't just send everything up. That, that will be a huge amount of data, a lot of it not that useful. So it does have some filtering capabilities. It understands some basic things. For example, if it saw a DC sync, which is normal from a domain controller, that's fine. If I see a DC sync from a non-domain controller, that's not fine. That's a signal I probably care about and I'm gonna send it up so it becomes part of these signals. So the sensors are not really doing the processing around it, but they do have some basic filtering and they will enrich some of the data so it has the best possible information to make those insights and do those detections from. Now, it does send up all of the login activity because that's, that's important. It needs the idea about the logins, but that opens up a really interesting capability for hunting. So if now, again, it's not some special separate thing. If I just go to my hunting and look at my advanced hunting, one of the things I can see around all of the different types of alerts and schemas available is I see identity info. So if I just do that, and also I have identity login events, so I have these different options available to me. In fact, let's look at identity login events. It's more interesting. If I just run that one, well, I could now go and hunt and find additional data. So here you can see I have a whole bunch of failures going on because this was me trying to attack uh, my own Active Directory. But I could now tune these queries. It will help me go and hunt and find additional bits of information. So that's a really great ability to leverage the KQL abilities we have in Defender to help me hunt and go into more detail on the potential attacks, the malicious activity that's happening in my environment. But as I mentioned, Defender for Identity is not only looking at the signals from the sensor, it is also hooking in to, for example, data that Defender for Cloud Apps gets through its connectors. So if I was to think, for example, about uh, Okta, and one login as examples, it can see and get information there as well. So those third party signals, it can act on, it can bring that into its intelligence. So it's not just for my Active Directory based services, which again is a huge part of it though, and I get the sensors, 
but it can also hook into those signals that it may be getting from other parts of the Microsoft All Up security system. So that's an important point around it. Another thing it has when we're thinking about those signals, and you kind of saw it here, but I just wanted to drill back into it, is the idea of that honey token. And so you saw this in action, but if we jump back over, so one of the types of alerts you saw was around honey token authentication activity. Hey, look, this particular account was leveraged. Well, as part of my configuration, I can flag certain accounts. So in my case, I took an admin account. So what you might wanna do is, hey, your default administrator, you would flag that because you're typically not gonna use it. You're gonna create specific per user administration accounts. So you can just tag users. And when you tag those users that you wouldn't normally authenticate with, when you do authenticate with them, well, that's gonna trigger the alert. So if there was someone doing malicious activity and they actually has start to be successful in the authentication, it's like, well, no, that shouldn't be used. That's a nice ability to go and trigger and do something on that. Now, from a licensing perspective, um, there's a strong chance you may already own it. So if we actually just jump over and look at the licensing page for a second. So licensing requirements. If you have the Enterprise Mobility and Security E5, you own MDI. The Microsoft 365 E5, you own MDI. The M365 E5, A5, G5 Security, you own it. And there is also a standalone Defender for Identity license. So there's a number of different ways you can license this in your environment, but you may already own it. So go and check to see what you have. As I talked about, it's a very low friction now deployment. There's really not a reason to not get this deployed. And it's just gonna open up now. It, it's additional signals. It's additional signals from what is a critical part of your identity infrastructure, because this is the source of truth. And then it's adding in new abilities to gain insight from those signals, yes, from its sensors, but also signals it may be getting through other components of the all up Microsoft security suite. So there's a strong chance you may own it already. And if you do, let's go and get that information added to the all up set of knowledge we have. If you don't own it, realize how important these components are to the complete identity picture. If identity is that new security perimeter, it's the first one you hit, I want that insight because yes, people will try and attack this, but people will also attack this. We need these signals to be able to not just stop an attack, but be able to detect and then perform some action to disrupt that attack. So I hope that was useful. I hope that kind of makes sense what Defender for Identity is. Yes, it gives me new signals, but it also then acts on its signals and signals from other places to really just bring into that complete ITDR story, um, all in now that single interface that is Defender. Till next video, take care.